guys, this is Jim Hoffman for East Office Hours. This is your Monday Minutes. Uh, I know I've been away a little bit with the Monday Minutes. I'm trying to uh, get a new format going for these Monday Minutes, get a little more interactive for you. But I wanted to, at least in the meantime, I didn't want to go too far without coming out with another quick video for you. Um, so today, I'm going to talk a little, bit, a little bit about airway assessment. Now, this is something that is talked about a lot in EMS, talked about a lot in class, whether it's ET class, paramedic class, refresher class, ACLS, whatever it is, right? They press on airway assessment and airway management. Now, I'm not going to go too much into it. Remember, this is Monday Minutes, so we don't have too much to get into. But I wanted to sort of focus a little bit on some of the things that you can think about when you're assessing the patient's airway. And the main thing I think for me that I want to get out to you today is that you have to remember that you've, you have a lot of tools available to you when it comes to airway management, okay? It's not just one thing. It's not just grab that hammer and start pounding away at the nail, okay? There's a lot of different ways that you can manage a patient's airway. It's not always the endotracheal tube, right? There's a lot of other things, especially nowadays, um, as EMS is evolving, we're getting, we're getting more and more tools that are available to us as providers to manage a pa patient's airway. So let's just go over real quick, okay, is things like your main assessment. Of course, you're going to do your, your major initial assessment, right? Your ABC, you're going to check the patient's airway, make sure it's patent, make sure it's open, all that good stuff, right? But when you start thinking about how you might manage a patient's airway, let's say your patient looks like you're going to have them manage, manage their airway, right? You're going to want to go ahead and manage it in a way that lets you um, uh, 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 give you the options here, right? So what do I have here? I've got things like your BVM. You know, you want to see if, your ability to, to perform the BVM ventilations. How is that going to be for you relating to the patient condition? Assessing for, the, for your ability to perform that endotracheal intubation. How is the patient looking? Are they going to be an easy tube or not an easy tube, right? Or what about using something like a King LT airway or other blind intubation device that you might end up using, right? What's the ability for that? Can you do, use that on the patient? So when you look at your main assessment, you're looking at not just your ABCs, but you're also starting to think about what's going to be the easiest way for you to manage and perform ventilations, intubations, or using something like a King Airway or a Combi Tube, right? So when we talk about advanced management, right, you want to look and make sure of the adequacy of the respiratory effort, looking at the SpO2. Nowadays, the SpO2 goal is 94%, right? Um, and if not, you might want to go ahead and give some supplemental oxygen uh, as required, you know, for that patient. Um, and of course, don't forget you've got your basic airway maneuvers. We're talking about the toolbox I mentioned before, the tools available to you. Sometimes the one tool might just be that head tilt, right? Might be the chin lift. That might be what you're doing to manage that patient's airway, okay? Now, some other advanced uh, management things you need to think about, okay? Don't forget, if they have a trauma patient, you might want to go ahead and you may make sure you maintain their C-spine immobilization, right? Think about jaw thrust as, as opposed to the head tilt, right? Uh, think about nasal or oral pharyngeal airways, all right? Um, and also, uh, remember, assist with the BVM if is indicated for the patient, but think about can you effectively ventilate the patient with the BVM, okay? Is it going to be able to be done with one person, or you're going to need two people to go ahead and use the BVM mask, right? Use the, the bag valve mask. All these things just to sort of think about when you're assessing your patient and you're, you're, you're thinking about, you know, their, their condition, whether it's trauma, medical, you know, uh, their oxygen saturation, your ability to management, all these things sort of tying together. And that's what I'm trying to get across to you today. Not necessarily the right way, the wrong way, or the only way to do it, but I'm trying to give you the different things that you can think about when you are assessing your patient and thinking about their airway, right? And how you're gonna manage it as you go on with your patient assessment and your patient care. Some other thing with advanced management, CPAP, right? That's available to us nowadays as well and can be a great way to sort of get that patient on CPAP 
right, according to their condition, CHF, asthma, pneumonia, whatever your protocols allow you to use CPAP for. But using CPAP is a great way to avoid having to get to that point of intubation, right? But you want to go ahead and do the intubation, guys, and you want to do it according to your protocols and according to the patient condition. Okay, managing the airway is important. You need to go ahead and think about what you're going to do to manage it, right? It might be intubation. Maybe it'll be oral tracheal intubation. It might even be nasal tracheal intubation. Again, going by your local protocols and going by the patient's condition, right? And we talk about the King Airway, those blind intubation devices, right? Depending upon your protocols and the, and the patient's condition, that might be an option for you. And it might be the better option depending upon the effectiveness on what you're trying to do. Now, in a lot of places, in my opinion, I think when you get a, a, a patient who's got an advanced airway in place, whether it's an endotracheal tube, a nasal, uh, nasal tracheal tube, or King Airway, whatever it may be, um, or if the patient is difficult airway, right? Let's say you're bagging them when you can't get the tube. To me, it's always a good idea to notify the receiving facility that you're coming in with that difficult airway or that you've got an advanced airway in place. It gives them a heads up, prepares them for your arrival, and lets them know you're coming in with something more than just your basic patient, right? Some of the things to consider, guys, is, you know, endotracheal intubation can be performed in, in different ways. It depends upon your protocols, your skill level, things like that. Some places let you do that blind nasal tracheal intubation or the oral tracheal intubation. To me, it's going to really depend upon the condition of the patient themselves, and it's going to depend upon your experience. If you're not experienced doing nasal tracheal intubation, you might not want to go ahead and try to do that. You might want to have your partner do it if they're experienced in doing it, right? Um, you know, experience is a big, uh, uh, you know, factor when you're thinking about doing intubations. We don't get to do intubations every day in a lot of areas in EMS, and a lot of times our experience level is uh, restricted to mannequins or restricted to, restricted to the OR that we get to do, right? So think about your experience, think about your comfort level when doing uh, these types of procedures. And that's why I go back to the beginning when you're thinking about the patient, what's gonna be most effective both for the patient and for your experience level when you talk about using a BVM, uh, nasal tracheal tube, oral tracheal tube, the king airway, or maybe even just some basic uh, airway maneuvers like the head tilt chin lift or jaw thrust and using an uh, oral pharyngeal or nasal uh, airway, okay? Just all these things to sort of think about, guys. And I know there's a lot of stuff, right? A lot of things to take into consideration and a lot of things that you're going to be doing in a matter of seconds, right? This is the type of stuff that it might be taking me five, six minutes here and a Monday minutes to go through just these things that you should be considering but when you get on scene and you've got that patient, these are the things you're going to be considering and making decisions in a matter of seconds, right? So this is all the time. This is why I do these Monday minutes to sort of drill in these types of of um, of things that you can think about when you're doing your patient care. Now, nasal tracheal intubation, depending upon where you are, many times is contraindicated in the cases that I have posted here. A lot of times, you don't want to do that the patient in cardiac arrest, if they're combative, severe head injury, facial trauma, um, coagulopathy, which is a bleeding um, disorder, uh, uh, or the patient's inability to, to, to have the uh, clot, um, uh, suspected foreign body, and upper airway trauma. These are, are it depends upon where you are, depends upon your protocol. Some protocols don't allow you to do nasal tracheal intubation. New York City actually doesn't let you do nasal tracheal intubation as one of the skills, right? So depending upon where you are, this is something you have to consider as well. So the tools that you have available to you might also be limited to not just your experience or a patient condition or what you think might be going on with the patient and what's going to be best for that patient, but it might also be uh, limited or available to you according to your protocols and the, the guidelines that you have to follow according to your medical director and your medical control, okay? So all this stuff you have to consider. Now guys, again, this is just a quick Monday Minutes, right? I'm not going to be able to get into every little thing here in detail 
and try to keep this under you know 10 minutes right I'm gonna actually try to be making Monday minutes a lot shorter than this uh, in the near future right but for now I want to get this out to you and I want to just again these are the things guys that we have to consider on every patient right and while this might take you know that five six minutes to get this this content of things to think about and and the tools available to you and things like that out there it when you get that patient whether it's medical or trauma or whatever the case may be you have to make the decision on how you're going to manage that airway in a matter of seconds so to me these monday minutes by getting it out there and it might be stuff again that we've learned emt school paramedic school acls refresher whatever it is right we've learned this stuff over and over and over again you might be thinking oh jimmy i've heard all this crap already i know all about this that's great i know all about it too my partner knows all about it we all know all about it right but by kind of hammering home these little uh, 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 assessment ideas and things that you can think about, I'm hoping it's going to hammer home some of these little techniques and some of these things that you should be thinking about. So when you get that patient, you can make that decision in a matter of seconds. Okay, so that's just me, guys. I hope these Monday minutes you can use them, and I hope that the next time you get a patient and you're gonna think about their airway, you're gonna be thinking, can I use CPAP and not get to the intubation, or should I go right ahead and get to that king airway and not bother trying to fish around for for an airway because it might be a difficult airway or cardiac arrest or whatever the case may be, right? All these things to think about. So I hope you'll get back to me. Let me know what you think and let me know what you do when you're assessing your patient, assessing their airway. The type of things you think about when you do it. You know, we've got the what? The moans, lemon, all that type of stuff, right? That we can use to kind of help us figure out, again, in a matter of seconds, whether or not, how or whether or not we can uh, manage a patient's airways with the most advanced thing as an endotracheal tube or the least advanced when using maybe an oral airway and just a plain BVM. So guys, that's about it for this week's Monday Minutes. One thing I want to mention, guys, you know, over on the main side of emssco.com, there is a lot of content there, okay? Um, and, you know, I know a lot of people would love to get their hands on uh, the content that's on the site, and it, it, it can add up, right? But what I've done here as uh, sort of like a package deal that you can actually get access to the entire content library at emssco.com and you can actually save $75 if you purchase this content bundle okay so you'll get everything that's inside emssco.com get access to it for a full six months right and save 75 bucks in the process so if you really want to go ahead and build your EMS knowledge and, and get some great study tools and hours of audio and video and great downloads and lots of great resources, go check this out. Just click on the graphic or click the click here to access uh, text here. It'll take you over to that page and you can kind of read and see everything that's available and what's offered in this package bundle. So again, I hope you can use these Monday Minutes, guys. If you have any minutes of your own, be sure to send them over to me. Got to have some great stuff coming up in the future, some great Monday Minutes, and, and I'm thinking when this new format coming out, it's going to be a lot more fun and engaging for you and for me, and I'm looking forward to it. So send me your minutes, and I can make some quick minutes You know, when I start doing that new format. Uh, my email is contact at emsofficehours.com. Until next week or next time, we're going to do Monday Minutes. Stay safe.